Greetings. We're going to show you how to make a mini witch. This witch is about six inches tall. And what I'm using is the Dollar Tree witch hat picks. They come in a three pack uh, in with their Halloween decorations right now. And I'm just going to pull one of the hats out here. And what I do is I take my needle nose pliers and I reach in and I'm just going to turn so I can take that stick right out of there. It's just glued in there. And I'm going to save the stick for another time. I might be able to use that actually for making like a broom or working with some other uh, craft item. But let's save the stick. And now I have my hat that I can use for my witch. So since I got the hat, I'm going to show you now how to make the body. The body is actually made out of felt. And we're going to do the body and then we'll do the hair and add a nose, and then we can add some other accessories too, because this is a great craft items that you can do with a family. Uh, you can do it with groups. Uh, you have a church group, a children's group, a senior citizen group. Uh, once you get the body made, and I know people who say, okay, I'll make up a whole bunch of bodies first. Uh, you make those up, and then from there, everybody else can put everything else together. So I'm just going to go over right now how to make the body, and I use a felt felt nine by 12 squares. And I'm gonna use some contrasting colors here just so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. Now, my body is a five inches in the height, three inches on the base. So it gives me five and a quarter inches along the side there that I'm actually gonna to have to fold or could actually hot glue too. Now, I also do from the bottom I'm gonna get my template here. I'm gonna have it angled. So I have a half inch from where I cut it. And the reason I do that is so I have the witch's body and the hat going into the center, not straight off to the side. So when I do sew the body together, I'm coming together up here in the middle. And that's why I do a half inch from the base or the half inch from the base of where you're you know cutting that out from. So as you can see when I put it on my felt I'm going to have this angle here. I'm going to have a half inch there. So that's going to give me the tilt so that the top ends up actually in the center of my witch. So I'm going to cut out my pattern here and as I said I'm using some contrasting colors here so you can see it better. Uh, I like to use the grays, the blacks for the witches. It's fun too, since you got all the color in the hats here. That'll look nice as a green, green witch there. So we're going to cut across the side here. All right, so here I have my body. Now, if you don't sew, you could actually just hot glue this seam. Fold that over, let it dry, and there you'll have your body already made for you. Then I have my base. My base is just a circle, two and a quarter inches all the way around there. And again, I'm just gonna pick out a spot on my felt here. And I usually try to get a couple of my bodies out of the same piece of felt. So I wanna make sure I have some room here. So I'm gonna cut around my base. Give me a circle there. And I can set the felt aside so I can use it for the next one. Then I said, you should be able to get two of the witches, the bodies, and the bases out of a piece of felt there. Now that I have my body, I'm actually gonna sew it. I usually sew everything. I'm gonna take a piece of floss and just again for contrast, normally I would use thread and I normally I would match it with the color here, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So I got a piece of embroidery floss, so it's a little bit thicker so you can see it. And sometimes it's good for some decoration type thing too. Sometimes it's real nice to see on the outside just to give some good color and everything. And I can just sew right up the side here. I usually do the blanket stitch. Go 
Got to be a little bit tough on the felt there. I'm trying to use a bigger needle here so you can see it, but I'm going to go through and then come around to the top again, poke in, and again, go through. And I'm going to do this all the way up to about an inch away from the top. I don't want to go all the way to the top because I'm going to be actually turning this inside out. So this is going to be the inside, so it doesn't have to be exactly perfect uh, as far as your stitching goes. And that's why I said you can actually do the other side. You can do long here. So we're going to sew this all the way up to the top here. I'm going to grab one here that I've already got and show you. So I've sewed all the way up to the top. Let me take my thread here. And I'm going to take a base too. Can I cut out another base here and show you how to add, add the base onto it? So we're going to tie a knot off here. And with the embroidery floss, again, I need just a little bit bigger of a knot. So I'm going to take my thread, once I get it through the needle there, and I'm going to start on the bottom there at the seam where I came together there and poke it on through. And once again, I'm going to do my blanket stitch. Now, if you're using a sewing machine, you could sew right around too. I'm just going to take it, line it up there. And as I go around, I just keep lining it up. Missed my blanket stitch there, so I'll just put it through. So I go over and then through. Line it up. So I got my seams lined up there. Go over through the center. And I'll do this just all the way around. And take a moment. Again, you can also do this hot glue. You can just add a touch of hot glue in there and then just go around and glue it. Once I get the base all the way around, is when I'm going to turn it inside out. Just to give you an idea there, let me grab one here again that... Now here I actually did, I used the thread, same color thread and everything, sewed around it. I sewed up my side, I left about an inch there so I can turn it inside out. And this again is gonna give us the body of our gnome. So now that I have it turned inside out, top part here is actually going to go up inside the hat. I want to give it just a little bit of weight to it, a little bit of filling too, so we have a nice solid gnome there. What I'm going to use is just a little touch of rice, I mean just a little, very little down in the very bottom there. All I'm trying to do is coat the bottom so it'll actually have a little bit of weight to stand up on its own. Now I use polyfill or fiberfill 
and actually use it in little pieces to fill my bodies here. And I tuck it down in there real well. This will give it the stability and the weight I'm going to stick it right down in there. And I just keep stuffing. And don't go small on it. Don't go, you know, just to thinking, okay, I'm just going to put a little bit in there or try to put a big amount at one time. It's best actually to pack it and to pack little pieces at a time. The little pieces will actually help fill in the areas here. So you get a nice firm body. If you use, you know, just one big piece and you're trying to stuff it in there, you're going to have something that's more flimsy. It's not going to be as concise and it's not going to be as nice, you know, nice and body there to attach things to. So feel free to just continue adding stuffing. It'll take a moment, but again, I like to use smaller pieces. That way I can compact, you know, and get every, every area there. And then when I get up to the top here, I may have to just push a little bit harder, get just a little bit more. Now the top part here is not gonna show. The top part is actually gonna be under the hat. So I'm gonna have my stitching on the outside rather than having the stitching on the inside, which I did by turning it inside out. So I can go ahead and just sew that up and not worry about how that seam looks. Again, I can also hot glue that too. It's just an easy way to get that done. And put together. In fact, I'm gonna show you. Let's see if we can just do that real quick here. I'm just gonna run that along, run my hot glue gun along the side there. Try not to put too much extra on there. You don't want it sticking out. Pack that down in there a little bit. Watch your fingers. And I'm going to seal it up. So there again, I could either sew it or use my hot glue gun. Let it dry for a moment and I'm ready now to add my witch's hat to it. So I'm gonna take one of my bodies, I'm gonna take the body I've made here, and I can pick out whatever hat I like. And I'm just gonna make sure I line it up there. And before I put it in my hat, I wanna add a beer, I wanna add my actual hair to it. So if it was a gnome, I'd be putting a beard underneath there. But since it's a witch, I wanna have the hair off the sides here. And what I do is I'll take the craft fur. You can get craft fur and it comes in squares. It costs two, three dollars. Any of the craft stores you can get it from. You can also get so many different colors. Uh, you can order online all different colors too. Uh, I've done different things with uh, with with the oranges, I can do an orange to match the orange hat there. Uh, if we have pastel colors, anything in a large variety of different colors available. Uh, but I would go with just the basics to start out with. And there's also, you have a choice too of what they call a long pile or a short pile. I know I'm getting a little technical here, but it does make a difference when you're actually making the hair on the witch there. You want to have something that's nice and stringy. so. I use something which is called the, the long pile. And as you can see, if you're comparing the two here, I have more sticking out here than I do here. So I'm gonna actually use my long pile rather than the short pile for my witch's hair. And for the hair, I'm gonna need two pieces. My, my, I'm gonna cut out I tried to cut out here a little bit here to show you already. I'm gonna do something that's an inch wide by two inches or two to three inches. Again, depending on how long the pile of hair is. What I wanna do is be able to cover all the way down to the end here. 
So I'm looking at doing something, I got two and a half inches I measured off here, and I measured across here two inches, so I'm just gonna go with an inch on each of these. And what I'm doing is I'm using an X-Acto knife to cut it. I don't use scissors. And I cut on the back of the fur. So just to give you a little technique here that's gonna help you out here, I'm gonna use an X-Acto knife to cut, and I'm gonna do about an inch and a half I'm sorry, an inch. I'm gonna have an inch there, and I'm just gonna lightly cut it. So I'm just cutting the back. Now, also what you wanna do is make sure you put something down underneath. You don't wanna cut into your table or tablecloth. Believe me, once you cut into one tablecloth, you're not gonna cut into any others. So I cut my inch, and then I across the bottom here so I have my two and a half inches. I'm just lightly cutting across the back of the material. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want all this fluff on the sides. I want that. If you're to use scissors, what happens is you get this straight edge when you're cutting. So if I cut along, even if I'm cutting on my sides there, I'm just getting this straight edge. I don't want that straight edge. I want the fluff there. I want it to come out. Now, if you wanna do something like bangs, I mean, that's quite cool. That's fine to do is with the bangs, but if you, if you cut with the scissors, that's what you're gonna get is a straight edge. That is why I use the X-Acto knife and cut along the back. Now there are some people that tell you that they can take the scissors and actually trim just the backing off. It's a real slow process if you wanna do that. But again, you risk cutting into this nice fur that hangs out there. So I use my X-Acto knife. Again, be very careful. Don't leave the knife sitting around where somebody could get into it or pick it up, a child or anybody. Uh, and I'll just cut right across there and take out that, give it a little pull. And there I have both sides for my hair. So I'm cutting two of those out. Now, with the witches here, what I wanna do is I'm actually gonna attach the hair on the seam. That way my seam's not showing when I get my witch together on the front or on the back. That way I have the seam covered. Little trick there. And I'm just gonna lay that on there, fold that back a little bit. Again, take my hot glue gun and apply a little bit of glue. Again, be careful. Uh, not something, again, if you're working with children, do the hot glue gunning yourself, or again, make the body ahead of time and then just glue it, get them going. A lot of times, too, it's fun if you have the kids pick out their own color beards. Bring in four or five different colors or go ahead and pre-cut your hair. I call it a beard because I make so many gnomes and I'm used to just making beards. Uh, forget that I'm doing more of a hair here. Uh, and then the other piece, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it off to the other side. And again, I'm going to overlap just a little bit up top here and have an angle here. This is so I have the body I'm going to put the nose in the center here. So again, I'm going to peel this back. I'm angled off the side a little bit. And I'm just going to put a little bit, bit of glue inside there. Hold it down for a moment. And there I have my hair. If you have the colored hair, like the orange, the orange, like I said, would look great with like the orange hat there different colored bodies, however you want to do it. Uh, it gives you a whole variety of different ways you can make your witches there. And I'm just going to pick one of the hats here. And now I'll be able to actually glue that hat right on there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a thin layer of glue right inside the hat. Run it around. And 
and just push the cap, push the hat down there. So there you have the basic body. You got your wig or your hair for your for your gnome there, your gnome witch. And next thing, all you need to do is pick out a nose. And what I use is pom-poms. Again, Dollar Tree has great, you can buy a whole bag full of them, all different colors, all different sizes. Uh, I look over them and I say, okay, maybe this size will look good, or I can pick a smaller size. Again, it depends. This is a great thing when you got the kids playing they can choose whatever they want. If they want to put an orange nose with that, that's cool. Let them. It's a lot of fun. So I'm going to actually just pick out a purple one to go with it. And I'm going to do it right in the center there, the seam where they come together. Again, just add a little bit of hot glue. I'm not going to put a ton on there, just a little. And glue that right down. Hold it there for a couple moments. Again, you want to do it yourself. To, you know, get a trusted adult or somebody that can play with the glue gun a little bit, but you know, help the kids out. And here I have my nose for my witch. From here, I can decorate however I want. This is the great part here. I can add things. Uh, let me see if I can pick up a little, little skull and crossbone if I want to glue that right onto the center there get a little char character to it. I could take a spider, add a spider to the top here, uh, have a little fun with different little props, anything you want. Uh, again, Dollar Tree has some great pumpkins. I could just glue a pumpkin to the side of her there. Uh, I love, I pick up a lot of the lace that they have in their aisles there too. And I could just take a lace Wrap it around here, glue it, glue it down. And there I have a nice little skirt for her. So just some fun things that you can do to add on to give them character. And we could do uh, little brooms. The Dollar Tree just has a ton of items that you can add as far as brooms, either going across here or up here. But this is just a simple, easy way uh, for you to make something that can be a craft item for the family to have fun with, a uh, simple item as far as getting out to the you know, family group together and just have some fun with it. 